During my time in this class, I found how challenging teaching art can be. Educators face a variety of obstacles in order to help their students grow as artists and creative thinkers. Not only do educators have to teach their students the fundamental lessons of art, they must also keep the students interested in what they are learning and excited about art and art making. Each week while meeting in seminar class, we have discussed what it means to be an art educator today. As future educators, we are learning to pose questions with no right answer and provide projects with no significant way to take them on. We have been able to practice these teachings while working with the Artward Bound students. Their most recent project was to create a field guide featuring invasive plants of the Boston Fens. As their mentors, we are helping the students come up with ideas on how to approach creating their field guide pages, as well as an art piece in response to their research. Although these students have an interest in the arts, we still aim to keep the pressure of being a good artist down, and we did not push them to do anything specific for the field guide pages or the final piece. We were just there to keep the creative juices flowing and provide assistance when necessary. The students were in charge and we acted as a fountain of information and resources to help the students accomplish what they set out to do. In this way, the roles of traditional school are practically reversed. And perhaps because of this, there is less pressure on doing something right since they are in control of the final product. These seminar classes have also taught me how to important it is to be able to incorporate contemporary art into the classroom. As an example of what I mean, if I were an instructor in the Artward Bound program, I may have taken the students to the Bacalar Gallery when first discussing the Field Guide project to show the work of Tim Knowles and his tree drawing series. By discussing this work, as well as the other nature pieces within the gallery, I would hope I helped inspire the students to start thinking of a new approach to their final piece featuring the plant of their choice. By connecting these contemporary works to projects or creating projects in response to contemporary work, we are keeping students informed and up to date on how art is being approached in the here and now. As great as traditional approaches are to art making, we can help our students think more creatively on what it means for something to be considered art in today's world. So, in essence, what we're going to be focusing in on is value, okay? The concept of value is... During my field work hours, I have met with Eric Bunker, an art teacher at Weymouth High School. He teaches the semester courses Drawing and Painting, as well as 3D Design, and the full year courses of Arts 1 through 3 and AP Art. It has been so interesting speaking with him and learning about his teaching techniques. So I would say I probably run my class in a very open studio type of way, but again, that varies depending upon what I'm doing for the lesson. As I introduce something, it's much more kind of a uh, lecture type format. And uh, once the lecturing has been done and they are pretty much off to work on whatever the, the theme is, then I really just let it be an open studio. And then I just kind of, like I said, I just bounce yeah. student to student. And what I really want to accomplish is to allow kids to find a part of themselves that makes them excited about being creative. Mm -hmm. um, so I think my main goal is to try to get them to find that part of themselves. In art, there's not really a right or a wrong way to do things, it's more of an exploration. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that when they come out of my class that they have that understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome because, you know, especially in this advanced class, these kids will be teaching me, oh, do you know uh, this artist who does these things? I'm like, oh, no, I don't know that. Yeah. So it's awesome that it's not just my kind of saying, oh, yeah, well, this is an artist movement that was based from, mm -hmm. you know, this time period or what have you. The kids are They are sharing. like, no stuff, yeah. Yeah, and I love to learn from them, too. I think, I think for students to be able to see, obviously, you're going to make an identification and relate to somebody who is making art that's a direct reflection of the life and world they live in. Mm -hmm. So for an impressionist... For us to talk about color and impressionism and then look at Monet and Manet and understand how they use color is great, but we didn't live in that time period. Yeah. We didn't really create artwork that was a reflection of, of that culture. Of that time. culture and of that time. So it's something that I don't think kids would really identify with. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be very important to incorporate contemporary artists because obviously that is much more of a direct reflection of, of, of our time and our mm -hmm. society. I think my view would be that I would absolutely encourage encourage it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think it might be something that I might try to make more of an effort to do, because I think I could definitely see it being very important 
and like a lot of the students, especially in the advanced level classes, will be very much like, oh, check out, you know, this muralist, or check out, you yeah. know, this, or what have you, Shepard yeah. Perry, you know what I mean? They're, you know, they definitely are very in tune to that. Yeah, that I, I feel like it's because of the technology that is so much more connected to, like, what's going on. It's a great point, absolutely. And it's amazing, too, because they'll actually, you know, I want to do this, um, I want to really show this form of light or something, to, and they will then go online, they'll use their smartphones to find yeah. <laughs> information, or they'll find images, so it's yeah. amazing how they can really get resources and research yeah. really easily, <laughs> which is awesome. I think that. Eric certainly has a great sense of keeping the definition of each project pretty open-ended. He offers a broad project idea that allows students to create whatever pieces they like and allows them to take projects in different directions. It's easy to see that students are not under a lot of pressure to do what is right, since Eric does not offer a right way to take on a project. He is there to give constructive criticism, open up windows to new techniques and ideas for students, and pr promote ideas and creativity generated by students. One of his most current projects with his art two and three students is a reflection on the 1930s Harlem Renaissance. Students looked at the work of Jacob Lawrence and created a mixed media piece based on his work in this particular era of time. Eric's Art 3 class especially worked well with this project, even if it wasn't their favorite. They seemed to be their own little art family. I was happy to see students teaching their peers while this project was going on, and I could see that Eric helped promote that within the classroom. In my own experience as a student, I wish I had had more teachers like Eric, who allowed open-ended projects and promoted new ideas and creativity and I would have loved teachers like those that I have found at Mass Art. I knew nothing about contemporary art growing up. It never was a subject mentioned to me. It wasn't until Mass Art that I even began to think about contemporary art. All I knew were some past masters like Van Gogh and Picasso, and I thought to be a good artist would be to replicate their style. I was never asked what is art or taught different techniques. I never had critiques or talked about art found in museums. Since my first day at Mass Art, the lessons I have learned as an artist have been such an eye-opener for me. I have completely reinvented my ideas about art and my ambitions as an artist. In this class especially, I have found how important it is to connect students with contemporary work and pose questions like, what is art? Of course, though, as an artist, I am still growing, as I am sure all artists are. I am not yet married to a medium or a subject, and I don't know if I ever will be. I will continue to grow as an artist, and I am hoping to someday soon find my voice as a creator of visual arts. Although I do not yet know what will become of me as an artist, I do have a solid mission as a future educator of the arts. I want only to enhance a student's interest in art and help them grow and learn as artists. I want to bring students into the 21st century of creating art if they are not already, and introduce them to what contemporary artists are doing. I want to actually talk about art with my students. I want to, them to start thinking as an artist even if they do not plan to become one. I hope to equip my students with the necessary skills to help them think and talk about art as I do now, and to prepare them for their own unique creative thinking, whether it actually relates to an art project or not. I believe creativity is all about solving problems, and as an educator, that is my mission. I want to help my students solve problems by thinking outside the box, by asking themselves, what does that really mean? The arts surround us in every way. I want to keep my students interested and informed in the fact that they are all artists. Art isn't just drawing with pencil or painting or sculpting out of clay. Art is photography, video, performance, creating an illusion, giving life to a vision. Art is abstract, blunt, metaphorical, or nonsensical. It's an everlasting discussion, a solution to a problem, a voice. Art is in the eye of the beholder.